What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fandoms Anonymous. We are here today. I got some great panelists to talk about a great topic today. I got my man, Alex, from Momentum Media. You guys know Alex. He's a regular on the show. What's going on, Alex? Nothing much, man. Just, you know, living, uh, getting ready to uh, just do a lot of different things on my channel. So I can't wait to do this uh, this episode with you guys. So, so yeah, I'm just super excited. All right, and I got my man Ian from the controversy. What's going on, Ian? Hey, I'm doing great, and props to you for getting that name right. I, I really respect that. Thank you. Most definitely. Most definitely. Ian, I'm going to give you a little, a little second to plug who you are and what you do. All right, so I'm Ian Elliott Carter of the controversy, as he just said, and I'm a content creator. Um, I'm a YouTuber, and also I do, do some skits and reviews with my son as well, so... Check me out on YouTube or, or Instagram, and um, I'm just a geek like these guys, a black geek as well, so I, I, I'm really happy to be here. Most definitely, most definitely, guys. We're going to get it crack a lacking. I am on the road traveling home to see Grandma. Like, I'm literally on the road to Grandma's house. <laughs> as the old song goes. <laughs> but, man, we're going get, to get this thing going. Today, we're talking about Detective Pikachu. Now, remember, man, Alex, we have these experiences sense of debate on the phone and a lot of times we just say you know what we should have recorded that so this is a conversation <laughs> that we're coming back to that we have today and I want to bring my man Ian on as well so we can get another perspective and you know see what somebody else saying other than our own opinion now man I just started talking about Detective Pikachu and I said man you know Avengers Endgame and no we're not about to talk about Endgame we're not okay <laughs> we're just gonna put that out there <laughs> um <laughs> I say that I, Avengers Endgame is going to be that movie. But I am really excited for Detective Pikachu. And Alex was like, eh, you know, I, I don't know. And I was like, you don't know. Hold on. You're being disrespectful. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Alex, I'm going to let you start first. I'm going to let you go first. And I want okay. you to express your opinion about why you were kind of meh on Detective Pikachu. Go ahead, man. Okay, so uh, this is just where I'm at with this. You know, it's funny. Like before we did that that uh, that uh, that debate earlier, I, I had got a question. One of my subscribers had asked me a question about that, and I answered it on my show. And in a nutshell, I just basically said what me and my uh, Mark, uh, Mal Malcolm, sorry, talked about was just that. Like for me, I'm not necessarily too excited for Detective Pikachu, only because of the fact that. Um, it's, I put it to you like this, as a Pokemon fan, and I'm not that big of a Pokemon fan, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of the original games, the trading cards, and all the different shows and stuff, but I'm not a heavy fan of it, and I just thought they should have stuck to the original material. Now, Detective Pikachu is based off an actual video game where Pikachu is a detective, however, you know, everything that I have seen from the trailers and marketing hasn't really grabbed me. And on top of that, like, you know, I don't believe that this is a movie that is marketable. Now, will it do – I think I will say this. It will do better than Shazam. It won't be – it won't be an Avengers Endgame. It won't be – it won't be, you know, it won't be a blockbuster. I think it will be a good film that would make its money back maybe a little bit more, but – as for me, from what I'm seeing, it's like, okay, lost dude who's, who's, whose father is missing or presumed dead, and Pikachu happens to bump into him, and they go on this adventure. And anybody who knows anything about Pokemon, that, I mean, to a degree, the game is somewhat based off that, but it's not necessarily a, it's not necessarily a, how can I put it, it's not necessarily a good story. To tell. Now, granted, I will say this: my positives about the movie, um, the, the the Pokemon look really cool. They do look really realistic. Like when I saw Charizard being Charizard, I'm like, this is how it's Charizard in live action. But you know, for me, seeing like you know Bulbasaur, and, uh, and, and and Lucario and Mewtwo, all those different Pokemon, those Pokemon were really cool to see live screen. But I'm telling you, this story does not excite me. It's basically to me like. One of those stories where, uh, you know, it's a typical story where a son is looking for his father and he happens to receive outside help that he normally wouldn't want to take. Because if anybody remembers the original cartoon series, 
Pikachu hated Ash for like the first two episodes. Like he wouldn't listen to him. He wouldn't do anything with him. I would have, I would have been glad to see Ash, Misty, and Brock. That's not to say we won't see them in this movie, but at the same time, this whole, I mean, granted, I feel like they're really basing this movie off of Ryan Reynolds. And don't get me wrong, Ryan Reynolds is an amazing actor, but I to see Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu, I'd rather see Ryan Reynolds do something different than be the voice of Pikachu. So that's where I'm at with that, and I'm sure we're going to get into deeper uh, discussion along with this after we hear other uh, you guys' opinions as well. <laughs> All right, Ian, I'm going to throw it over to you, man. I'm going to go last. Oh, thank you. I've been waiting. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree and disagree with Alex on some things. Um, so the parts I'm agreeing with, like, um, I, I honestly am not a huge Pokemon fan as well. I, I agree. I've never... Uh, I remember when the, the boom of it came and everybody was collecting the Pokemon cards. I was just trying to be what everybody else was doing. And I ended up trading, I remember, um, uh, a hologram card for Squirtle because I thought Squirtle looked cool. And everyone thought I was an idiot, and I was. So I, I don't have the best history with Pokemon. <laughs> but um, I'll say this, though. Um, as a, I, and and I, love, I love my anime, Dragon Ball Z. We could talk about that all day. That's, that's my shit. But, uh... But when it comes to Pokemon, I was never really a fan. But when it comes to this movie, though, it got my attention. I'm very excited about it, and, and for, for a lot of reasons. One, it looks very um, original. It, it, you, you made the point, like, it, it looks like a um, one of those stories that like, the kid's trying to find his father. I get that, too, but it, it's so different, and I like how it's world-building. Like, a lot of these universes are trying to copy the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe nowadays, and a lot of them are not being successful. But I love the attempt of trying to make a huge universe in movies so we can get multiple ones. Um, but uh, what you said about Ryan Reynolds, like it's, it's Ryan Reynolds trying to sell the movie. I'll agree with that and disagree with that. I think it's very different for Ryan Reynolds. Um, of course, he's always got his uh, his his, uh, his charm that he does, his, his comedy. It's, it's always the same with him most of the time, but... I don't, I wouldn't, if you would have said that Ryan Reynolds is playing Pikachu about five years ago, I would have laughed at you and be like, that's, that's not going to happen. I don't, I don't see that at all. But I love how he's going outside of his, his, um, his box a little bit. And I, and I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not even a huge Pokemon fan, but when I see these commercials, I'm like, wow, this is kind of getting me interested. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my research a little bit, getting ready for the movie. I'm excited. I'm, I'm fanboying now and I'm, and this is something I could show my son, and we could both um, dig into it together. But, um, but like, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it, and I think it's going to sell a lot of money. I think it's going to be one of those uh, sleeper movies that's going to su- surprise a lot of people. Most so. definitely, most definitely, man. My opinion on this is Alex. Alex made his point that they should have done a Ash training story, Ash leaving Palatine story. All of that is fine and dead. Now, let me talk about my history with Pokemon. I have been Pokemon since Pokemon has been Pokemon, okay? You know, I, I go way back with the Pokemon. I go way back with the Pokemon and the Pokemon. You know, I went from the Pokemon to the Digimon, and I was Pokemon and Digimon. I was a little bit more Digimon than Pokemon, but I love these Pokemon. I've even been watching the new uh, Pokemon anime that's actually out and if y'all don't know, there's an app called Pokemon TV. It has just about all of the Pokemon seasons for the cartoons in English. It's called Pokemon TV. I love it. I can just watch Pokemon whenever I want to. It's even, it's even got that Pokemon 2000 movie on there, too. So y'all go check that out. Anywho, I believe that starting off with a movie that is not from the original source material. The original cartoon was the best idea because we have recently seen in movies when you stick to the source material sometimes you only are going to get those fans who are stuck on the source material. A A movie's job is to make money. They are trying to get everybody to go see said movie. If we look at Hellboy the people that I know who are into Hellboy said that Hellboy was just just about as comic book accurate as you could get. But the people that are not into Hellboy did, did not resonate with them. 
It just did. And Hellboy made the money that it did because of that. All right? We look at stuff like the Dragon Ball Z movie that they did. Mm-hmm. We look at stuff like the last Airbender movie that they did mm-hmm. where they tried they tried or attempted to stick so heavily to the source material that it just fell completely flat. Well, I disagree with the Dragon Ball uh, kind of though. I don't think they, they looked at the source material at all for the Dragon Ball Z okay. movie. Okay, I'll give, I give you that. I'll give you that. But it, it fell flat. It fell yeah. flat. So looking at this on the outside, my mindset is, okay, I'm a movie, I'm a, I'm a movie person. How do I get my mom, my dad, my sister, mm-hmm. my extra family members, the people who know Jack Diddley about this this franchise, to come sit in the theater for an hour and a half, two hours, and watch my movie? You know? You, you have to look at it from that way. I'm glad that they did not do. Now, when it first started out, uh, you can go back on my channel and look when I said, the Detective Pikachu, what? Why? Why? But when I started watching these trailers and I started seeing some of my favorite Pokemon on there and they're in that hybrid CGI live action, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is legit. This right here is a starter step. This is a, this is a step into that. This is the the catalyst that says, okay, if this is successful, and it, it, the buzz is raving about it, the buzz is definitely is definitely going on for this movie. This movie is getting more buzz than X Men Dark Phoenix. Any movie can get more buzz than X Men Dark Phoenix at the time. <laughs> so, yeah, it, that's, that's kind of like a false equivalency, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, my thing is. I absolutely love what they're doing with Detective Pikachu. Let's just open the door when we see how much money it's going to make to then go in and do a Pokemon movie where we're following a Ash or, or whoever, red or blue or yellow or whoever the trainer is. Yes, it does open the, do- the door for that. And for that reason, I'm excited. What do you guys say? Um, oh, we just so, played so I, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. So Ma, just so I want to touch on a few things. And I agree with Malcolm when he says, because I consider myself a filmmaker, that you want to reach out to different people who have, who not only know the material, but who also don't know the material. Malcolm, Malcolm mentioned uh, Hellboy. Let me just point out, before this new Hellboy movie came out, the other Hellboy movies that came out previously didn't do that well in the box office as well, and they stuck to the source material. The only reason why they made a second Hellboy uh, continuation after the first one is because of the fact the fans of Hellboy wanted it. The reason why Hellboy 2 got Green Lantern is because of the fact of how the fans wanted a second Hellboy, and that was such a small market, very small. Even the, the studio said, listen, we don't want to do a Hellboy 3 because we're not sure how it's going to turn out. We're not sure if what we're going to do. So let's, re- let's wait a few years and reboot it and see if we can revive a new franchise, right? Well, if I'm being 100% honest, that didn't, you know, that didn't work, work out as well because they catered to their fans. So it's not necessarily about sticking to the source material because I can argue that the first Iron Man movie stuck to the source material and we now have an MCU. And if anybody who's seen Endgame, they know that sticking to the source material to a degree does work. Now, I will say this. Malcolm is absolutely right that if you want to introduce, like, Pokemon to an out, out obscure audience, you would have to do something different, right? I understand that perspective. However, I've argued that Pokemon, there are more people who play Pokemon, read Pokemon, had the cards of Pokemon, than anybody who's ever read a Marvel comic book or anybody who's ever read a DC comic book or seen a DC TV show or a Marvel TV show, right? So the fandom is there. I'd argue that this movie can make its money based off their fan base. They don't really need outside people. Now, if you were to say to me, oh, let's take, let's take Static Shock and make him the, the poster trial of the new, the new wave of DC characters, we're gonna have to market him. I'm telling you right now, not a lot of black people who, who, who don't know who he is is going to like do what they did like they did with Black Panther. If not, they're not going to do that. Only because 
Black Panther actually had a history of people, had a history of comic books and all the other good stuff, for the most part. Static does not. So when I look at Pokemon, Pokemon has been around since the 80s or in early 90s. You want to make an argument to me that, that DC wants to make Static Shock the poster child of, of DC, then okay, we'll do that. But you're going to have to market to everyone. Pokemon? Like I said, Pokemon is such a generational, timeless thing. And me and Malcolm were having conversations about, oh, well, if you go to, like, like you know, Walmart or Target, the first thing you see is Pokemon because it's so broad, right? Well, it's always been like that for me because everywhere I go, whether it's a Ross, Walmart, Target, Publix, any of the, anything of those nature, there's Pokemon plastered way before there was a Detective Pikachu movie even coming out. So... I made the argument that the fandom for Pokemon has always been there. They, the, the studio really knew, whoever's doing this movie, knew that if this movie, once this movie comes out, that it was going to do well just based off the fan base that it had. We have to keep in mind, this is not an upscale property. This is a very known property. So yes, I agree with the, the, the difference of approach. I just don't agree with the fact that they had to reach outside of everyone to get people interested in this movie. I do Once, agree that Pokemon is like out there. As soon as you walk into Walmart or any any like um, like comic book store, it's it, it's out there. You, you're gonna see Pikachu. You're gonna see the Charizards. And and Ryan Reynolds is, is a hot 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 actor right now, and he's gonna sell movie tickets <laughs> for some reason. And so I definitely agree. It's it, it's it's a brilliant marketing plan. Getting these two mm-hmm. together, it's gonna sell regardless. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing about that, though, Alex, is, again, the, the movie's job is to not, it's to, yeah, it is to sell to the fandom, but it's to sell to the people outside the fandom. Yes, right. when you go in a store, you're going to see Pokemon stuff. I know the three of us, whenever we go in somewhere, our eyes, based on what we do, based on, even if we weren't content creators, and we were just fans of stuff. Our eyes are always 100% going to gravitate toward whatever has anything to do with anything sci-fi. 100%. But 33-year-old Zachary, Zachary Marshall, okay? Zachary Marshall doesn't care anything or doesn't follow anything sci-fi. He doesn't follow anything superhero, comic book, or anything like that. He heard about it. He scrolled past it on Facebook. But now, when that guy goes into a store and he sees a, a Detective Pikachu sign, or he goes to Burger King and gets something to eat and sees a Detective Pikachu sign, his mind is now, his eyes are now seeing it. And it's like, oh, what's this? Again, that's, it's different from those of us who live in that world, who have that mindset of sci-fi, sci-fi, sci-fi. But which the goal is not to appropriate to the fandom; it's to sell to people who are outside of that. What do you think about that? I think honestly, uh, we we think it too broad when it comes to like you know the normal the normal man. I think uh, what what studios need are trying to do really to sell these tickets is is, is catered to the children. And I think uh, that's definitely like like these superhero movies nowadays, when it, whether it be DC or Marvel. It, it, it's really to get these kids excited so they can get the parents to buy the tickets. And I think it, it, it's a win-win situation for them when they see Pikachu and stuff like that. I think the kid, it's, it's all about marketing to the children. Now, of course, it's going to market it to us. Like, we're, we're fanboys. We're grown-ass men that we love shit like this. But it, it, it's not really going to speak to the demographic of people that don't have children. But... That's what they're. That's what the end goal is. It's going to reach to the the, the grown-ups that don't care about this stuff. Okay, we still got to get their tickets. Let's reach out to the children. And I think right there, that that's that's all what marketing is when it comes to these these um, sci-fi comic book movies nowadays. Is it's if it's not people like us that are fanboys, how can we get the kids there? Because that's gonna get the that's gonna get the parents' tickets as well. And you know that's funny. That's an actual good point because I've noted like. I have extended family here in Orlando on my on my wife's side, and my nieces and nephews who are like no more like my oldest niece and nephew is like five years old. Pokemon came out when I was like six seven years old, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's been around since then. They really want to go see this movie 
all because like you know before this movie came out like my nieces and nephews used to have pokemon bed sets pokemon you know like clothes and then when they saw the, the trailers and stuff they wanted to see the movie so i agree with ian when he says it is more so geared towards kids but at the same time there is that you know there is that there is that adult element there because if you watch the trailers ryan reynolds is not just a baby Pikachu. He's basically oh, he Ryan not... Reynolds. Yeah. And, you know, being Pikachu in a sense. So it's, it's more so Ryan Reynolds than it is anything else. So that's why, and I agree with that point. It is more so marketed to the kids and somewhat fanboys and people outside of Pokemon. However, like, like Malcolm was saying, which I do agree with, is that people who are in this space, who are fans of the fandom, see that on the regular. But I, I guess for me, who's not a huge Pokemon fan, as I said earlier, I've, I've seen that all my life. And, you know, my mom, and I don't know about you guys' parents, but my mom used to tell me I wasn't allowed to play Pokemon, you know, because she was super spiritual and she, you know, she believed that God didn't want us to do that. And I'm like, well, I'm going to play it anyway. I'm just not going to tell you. So, and I played it and, you know, my friends had it and all this other stuff. And, I'm telling you, like, everywhere I went, like, you know, as I can remember as a young boy, I saw that. I saw Pokemon. Like, even now, like, I was about to go to Publix today. I, well, not today. Yesterday, I went to Publix, and I just walked in, and there's Pikachus everywhere. And it's not because I I, I just I can't notice it. I'm just like, okay, clearly, because they're promoting a movie, but there's Pikachus everywhere, and there are little kids who probably have never seen or played the game of Pokemon who want that little Pikachu, and they don't even know what it is. You see what I'm saying? So I agree with Malcolm that as a fan, we do see that on a daily basis. And I do agree that as a movie, you are trying to reach out to different people. But my, my thing is, I, I, like I was saying before, I think the studio is in a position where they don't necessarily need that. That's my thing, because, like, like for instance, how we brought up the Dragon Ball movie, the live-action one, okay, that movie didn't do too well in box office because it was just told improperly. They cast the wrong people. They cast, they, they told, they, to, a, to a degree, the story was somewhat accurate, to a degree, but for the most part, it was just a terrible, terrible movie. Remember uh-huh. the, the recent, the recent uh, Dragon Ball animated movie? It was Goku versus Broly. That was Amazing. released in theater. It was released in theaters, and it did really well. But yeah. it was only in theaters for like three weeks. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily the material. The fans went out to go see the movie, and it did really well. And if the and if the, and if the studio wanted to, they could have kept it out because the fans of that particular um, fandom wanted to see it, but they chose not to keep it in theaters. So that's what I'm saying. Like it's, I, I feel like it's a double-edged sword. Yes, that film is trying to get everybody outside of the fandom. My argument has always been, though, I don't believe that that's, I don't believe that they're necessarily banking on that. Because, like I said, if we look at recent history right now, like for instance, Marvel fans. <coughs> excuse me. It is. I, I will say this. There was a point in time that only Marvel fans made the MCU what it is. Now it's everybody else because everybody who now now it's, it's at a point it's everybody including Marvel fans right people who've never read the comics and they just watch the movie but I can tell you from the first Iron Man up into maybe Thor the first Thor that was all for the most part Marvel fans not just everybody else for the most part that's what I'm saying like I really do believe that. This particular movie is going to be banking on, for the most part, Pokemon fans, not necessarily everybody else. But I could be wrong. I, I think it's going to have that effect that the MCU did if, if they continue to world build. And, and uh, I think it's right. going to start off exactly what you just said about the MCU. I think it's going to, it's going to have the, the kids and the hardcore fans. And then when they, it keeps going and it builds momentum... I, I could I could see it I could see it getting just as big if if they take it really serious. Here's my thing. If and I'm gonna take what you said, they should do Alan. If they do a live action trainer type journey movie, right? Uh huh. 
should Pikachu still be voiced by Ryan Reynolds, or should Pikachu just be Pikachu? Uh, um, I think Pikachu should still be voiced by Ryan Reynolds, or, like, I think it could be either or, because here's the thing, like, um, I'll, I, I'll just say this. Recently, before, before I, I, I just walked out the house, um, I was just reading the comments about the, the Pikachu trailer, and there are a lot of them who ask, are we going to see Misty? Are we going to see Brock? Are we going to see Jim Battle? Are we going to see Ash? Are we going to see other Pikachus that don't talk? So I think it was a smart move. It was a smart movie making move to make Ryan Reynolds the voice of Pikachu because as you guys know, Ryan Reynolds is hot right now in regards to what he's been doing in movies lately. So I think it would have been wise to either keep him as a voice, but if they chose not to go that route, the movie, I think people would still go see the movie. Like, i.e., Pokemon 2000. People still went to go see that movie. You know what I'm saying? And that was an animated movie. You know what I'm saying? And that movie did well, too. So I just think that there's there's a lot of variables. Now, I do I think, I will say this, I don't believe that Pokemon would have made as much money as Ryan Reynolds was not attached to the project. I will say that. Mm, I agree. Uh, I don't see them not using Ryan Reynolds in this franchise if it's successful, though. That's just like taking out Tony Stark. I mean, and, that, and that's just me speaking. I haven't seen the movie yet, but, like, I, I just, I don't see, if you if you replace Robert Downey Jr. after a couple of movies with a different person, I, I don't see a lot of, a lot of people continuing um, viewing the, the franchise. So I think Ryan Reynolds, I, and this is broad, we haven't seen the movie yet, but I think Ryan Reynolds is definitely going to make his mark on this character so i don't i don't see and i i mean to be accurate you know everybody wants you know the original pikachu and ash and like you said misty and brock but you know if, if they want to keep profiting i don't i don't see them taking him out <laughs> i they, like you said about the studio making money i don't i don't see it happening right no i agree with that most definitely guys we appreciate all of you all for listening to this awesome conversation we've had about to take a Pikachu. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the Family Dollar YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media links, whether it be on Instagram or the Facebook page. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. Our in game spoilers review is coming. Please be patient. Please. Please be patient uh-huh. with us. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We got to do it right, so don't worry, it's coming. Alex, let everybody know where they can find you at. You guys can find me at uh, Momentum Media or the YouTube. We're doing a whole lot of different things this year. So uh, check me out on Momentum Media. You can also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Momentum Media. And you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Alex Hansen and Instagram at Mr. Alex Hansen as well. And just a really quick plug, I am going to Orlando MegaCon this year. I'll be there live streaming the event and meeting a whole lot of different actors like Luke Cage, the Green Arrow, good stuff, good people like that. So definitely, if you're in the Orlando area, please uh, please walk up, come talk to me, come um, take pictures with me if you want. And, um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing the next few weeks. All right, my man, Ian. All right, guys. Um, appreciate you having me on. Um, if you want to follow some of my content, go to youtube.com slash the university. <laughs> that is the C-O-N-T-R-O. V E R S I T Y, the controversy. And uh, I look forward to collaborating with these guys in the future. These are great nerds to be in presence with. Most definitely, guys. You know who we are. We're F A E N D O M S A N O N Y M O U S. We're all over social media, right here on YouTube where you're watching this, as well as where you can see your podcast, too. Again, like I said earlier, don't forget we're on Instagram. We're doing a lot more on Instagram and follow us on the Facebook page. We are taking a convention break for right now but don't forget you can just catch us at MobyCon in Mobile, Alabama Memorial Day weekend uh, that next weekend we will be in the Big Easy in New Orleans, Louisiana at Big Easy Con you guys, if you are looking to get a discount on your ticket, use the code FANDOM A-N-O-N so that's F-A-N-D-O-M-S A-N-O-N to help you get a discount on your ticket. We're going to be there, man. Amy Jo Johnson, the original Pink Ranger, is going to be in the building. I still can't believe it myself. We got a lot of stuff coming up. As I always say, we'll see you guys in another video.